Hey everyone, it's Paul, and hey, do you need some support? I know I do. And when it comes to 3D printing, I know that support is 90% of what allows us to have a successful print or not. And with Chi2 Box Pro version 1.4, they've added some new features to their support system, and I'd like to talk to you about it today. So, let's dig into it. Okay, here we have a custom carbonite model. This is uh, something that I make over at paulpapedesigns.com. Shameless plug. Uh, just uh, find yourself frozen in some carbonite. But uh, as you can see with this model, it is not sitting square to the build plate. It is something that is going to need to have some supports. So uh, one of the things that I do love about Chi2 Box is that uh, with their pro version, their support system, their auto support system seems to work pretty well right off the bat. Nothing is perfect, but this one can get you from about 90 to 95 percent of the way there with just a little bit of manual tweaking afterwards. But there are some new things that they have included in the new Chi2 Box Pro version 1.4 that I think are making this even better. So here we have the model sitting here. We're in the support tab of Chi2 Box. And as you can see here, we've got some options. We have heavy, middle and lightweight supports uh, for a model like this. We want to use something that is a middleweight support. But obviously, the larger the model is, the heavier the supports you want to have on it. If the model is fairly light, switch to light. Or if your model has multiple zones of thinness and uh, heavier areas, then go in there and manually adjust it. But for the auto supports right off the bat, I'm going to go with middle supports. By default, the Z lift height is about five millimeters. I don't recommend printing directly on the build plate because you deal with elephant foot. There's a little tweak that I can tell you on how to fix all of that and we'll do that in a later video. But for the most part, you do want to elevate your prints to make sure that they are going to print successfully and you need to have support to make sure that that happens. So here we have a minimum Z height of five millimeters and we can come down here to the very bottom and we can choose the all function. This is just going to allow us to automatically support our model using middle weight supports. And as you can see here, we've got a lot of supports because it's a big flat surface, which is why I chose this model to demonstrate to you. Now, one thing that used to uh, bug me a lot is uh, if you notice down here in the corner, we're going to zoom in here. We have a five millimeter lift and this bottom corner is got a lot of supports in here. And sometimes what can happen is depending on how your print settings are set up on your printer, this very bottom corner can sometimes get a little thick, chunky. There's too many supports. Um, it's just not going to uh, work out terribly well. So you may need to lift it a little bit higher than the five millimeters. Now before with old version of Chi2 Box Pro, when you went to go change the Z lift height after having done your supports, it would tell you it's going to erase all of your supports and you got to start all over. This is a really big pain in the butt if you are a person who has done a lot of manual uh, placement of your support systems. But now with Chi2 Box version Pro version 1.4, it allows us to change the Z height and not delete our supports here. It is auto growing. It is auto. Um, it is automatically going to uh, allow that to grow. So it'll keep pushing the, them down. It doesn't matter. And we can go the opposite direction too. We can go back down to five and it will um, it will automatically uh, change that as well. So if we go five, there we go. See, it deletes it and it automatically places it so that it's back on the build plate. So we're going to switch this back over to 10. Uh, a feature that a lot of people don't know about when dealing with supports in Chi2 Box Pro is we have something called touch tip distance here. And so if we go ahead and remove all of them and it's going to say, hey, do you want to remove all your supports? Yes, I do. Go ahead and remove all of those. And we adjust the touch tip distance. What this is, is this is the distance between each of the individual support structures touching your model. Uh, by default, that's actually set to zero. And so it gets really, really uh, thick with the uh, supports in there. Um, four seems to work pretty well, but you can take that up as wide as you want. We're going to try five. Well, we'll try seven just to demonstrate how it works here. And again, if we click the all button, Wait for it to do its thing. And then you can see we have a lot more space between the supports here. And it creates a lot less, uh, a lot, a uh, lot less density and a lot less support material being uh, used up here. Again, if we choose merge supports, we'll see if it needs to merge anything. I think it's actually doing pretty well for what we need there. And for a model like this, I think seven would actually be perfectly fine. We may want to come in here and add a couple of manual supports down this back line here, but it's, I don't think honestly it is that necessary. 
Another option that I'd like to talk to you guys about is something called bi-directional support. And this is a new feature for Qi2 Box Pro version 1.4, but it's not active by default. So what you need to do is you need to come over here to your advanced tab, turn that on, and then you'll see a lot of options. But the one that I want you to be familiar with is generate bi-directional cross structure. That is a very mouthy way of saying now we can actually support our supports in two different directions. Once that's done, we can go ahead and close this out. Now, this has to do with manual support. It's not with the automatic support. It's only with manual support. Originally in the past, when we would bring our supports manually uh, out from each other, you would be able to have one direction, one plane where you'd put one column here, one column here, and it would create cross um, supports between that one. But if then you move to a third plane further or away, it would create it, it wouldn't connect those. And now with bi-directional support, it will. So if we see here, we can come in and now if you look, we're getting bi-directional support. It's actually connecting on two different sides. What that means is you get triangles and triangles are the strongest geometric form. So it will allow you to have much better support for your models. So bi-directional support is a really nice feature that is available. If we turn the model around, you can actually bring the bi-directional support in the opposite direction. Look at that. We got nice, strong triangles there. Uh, there we go. You can see them much better there, much better. So bi-directional support. We also have, if you open up your advanced tab, once again, you will notice that you have the option of doing, uh, enhanced automatic support. Now, what this allows you to do is global reinforcement, triangle reinforcement, or independent reinforcement. Triangle reinforcement is new, so is global reinforcement. So if we choose global reinforcement, close out our advanced settings, and then uh, we'll remove all, so all of our manual ones, and then choose all from automatic. This is actually going to give you much better uh, support individually and what this is what this is doing is it's supporting its own support um, a lot of times when you're uh, 3d designing something and you're using the auto support function it's going to create individual columns like we saw before we could see all the way down the line but those as they're building up they can get wobbly uh, depending on how steady your build plate is with the rise and how thick your materials that it's going into and that's what causes those little minuscule lines that run through your model and when you're especially when we're dealing with supports because the way that this model is laid out it's going to start printing here in the bottom corner as you can see here as it's building up but all of your support is uh is having to print itself to until it matches up with the model itself now with this omnidirectional support, what it's doing is that the supports are actually supporting themselves. If we look down inside of it, you can see that all of your supports are connected and interlocked. This means that it's a lot like an FDM print where all of your, your support is supporting itself, creating a nice even bed for your model to rest upon once it actually makes contact. And there you have it, a few more options available for supports in Qi2 Box Pro version 1.4. I think it really makes a difference when it comes to printing. So your successes and failures on 3D printing in resin can really come down to how well your supports are put together. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to use a little bit extra resin for better support to ensure that your prints are successful. That little bit that you're going to waste in creating supports that you're going to throw away easily negates having to print your model again because it failed the first time. So it's a very minuscule amount that you'll be wasting there. And with these new features available in the program, I think that you're going to have a lot more options for success. So the things that we covered today, again, we're elevating the, the ability to elevate your model up and down and it automatically readjusts your supports. We have the ability to widen the distance between our support columns. We have bi-directional support as well as support for your support. Just a whole lot of support here in Paul Pape Designs with G2 Box Pro version 1.4. Remember to work smarter, not harder, and hopefully you guys learn something. Don't forget to take advantage of this really cool offer from G2 Box to take 40% off a one-year subscription to G2 Box Pro. That includes all these cool new features. Or if you're not sure you want to invest in an entire year, you can still get 50% off one month just to try it out. And I can guarantee you, once you try it, 
you'll stick with it. All right, I'll see you guys around. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment, and I'll answer them as best I can. Until next time, see you later. <laughs> Until next time, see you later. That's how that works, Paul. Bye.